Good morning, West USA. I'm not going to lie, that was a little close chowing down this uh, <laughs> breakfast burrito. I didn't think I was going to get it down in time. <laughs> but Sarah there had faith in me, so hey. I appreciate that. Anyways, welcome to another Tuesday morning edition of our weekly webinar. We appreciate you joining us. A um, little sneak peek at what's coming up today. Of course, Todd Menard here is going to give us a look at the numbers. we got Mick Menard from the Bookspan Baker team going to give us our mortgage minute. I'm gonna just Every once in a while, I just find all these great tips for closing the deal. So we're going to talk about closing that deal when you're sitting on the other side uh, with a buyer or seller. How do you actually get nice. them to close? And then our newest managing broker, we're going to introduce you to Susan Slattery. And also she's going to discuss some top broker issues and as well as her visit uh, to uh, NAR and uh, some of the things. Uh, really interesting stuff. And of course, don't do that with Bob. If you got any questions or like copies of the slides or have any suggestions for us, as always, email us at webinar at westusa.com. All right, Todd, what do you got cooking? Hey, for us Michael, today? good morning, everyone. Taking a look across the top, we have 58 days closed on market, 1.88. That's continuing to go down, month's supply. 53.22 uh, is what the absorption rate is. We're just eating up this inventory. 561, just over, is the average list price, and 340,137 is the average sale price. 97.51 uh, list price to sale price retention. Uh, you know, this is weird. We're going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Taking a look at inventory across the board we're at 16551 that of course is well down period <laughs> pending is at 6240 which is actually not a bad number even though it is down and closed units at 5683 we have a few more days about a week left to go so we'll see how that turns out looking at the listing uh, new listings taken we're 2297 again that's low we need to keep that over 2500 and of course uh, that's causing our days on market active to be about 158 days 159 days on market Taking a look in the bottom right hand corner as we look at our price ranges, um, not a lot of changes in the activity, but just, you know, month over month. Take a look at these uh, again. How you use this is when you are working with clientele in specific price ranges. This is the MLS numbers um, active, uh, but you can also go back in and if they're in a particular area, do the same thing. Take a look at the price ranges in a specific subdivision or in a specific geographic one mile uh, radius around that subdivision, uh, and it'll give you a much greater picture um, as to what's happening, you know, the number of units available, the days on market, and also what percentage of the total inventory. And I think these are important numbers to tell the consumer. Uh, it helps them set the expectations. On, on really what they can expect as far as locating that perfect home for them. So looking at the uh, the spreadsheet across the board, um, again, we talked about the fact that we haven't taken as many listings. We You can also see the listing count way over to the right as far as the months uh, that previous. And one of the things that you need to know is it's been, we talked about it last week, week uh we are at uh this this inventory level hasn't been this low since uh, Dece uh since july of 2013. so again this is just something to keep in mind and something to take a look at um taking a look at the uh pending uh we're sitting at 6240 uh going across the board uh we were we should be well up into the mid to high sixes um again this is also speaking what is normal for arizona right now over the last six months or so uh not not necessarily a year ago because those numbers were dramatically higher. Um, taking a look at closed inventory, it is the 22nd, uh, but at the same token, uh, we do have the most important part of the month left, which is the closing cycle, which is the last 10 days. So we'll see where we go uh, and we will have to wait, uh, actually not next week, but the week after to see kind of what's happening. Uh, taking a look down at the bottom of the month's supply. As you can see, 1.88. We were 1.99 last week. Slide your eyes across. We closed the last and uh, the last month at 2.19. A year ago, same period, we're at 2.47. So again, we're not dramatically low, but obviously, we just, as you know, in the marketplace, I don't have to tell you, there's just much less. Uh, visibility, much less product to select from. Um, looking at the average sale prices, uh, these numbers go up typically when they're limited, when the market is limited. So again, we're up to 561 as far as the average sale pr uh, list price is concerned. Average sale price at 341.37. It's good. It's hovering. It's hovering between 320 and 340, and, and that's good. Um, that means that we're, it's not racing away, but it is a little bit higher, about 6% higher than it should be right this particular moment. And that is the pressure that's being placed upon those properties due to the fact of the low inventory and 
demand. Um, finally, at the bottom, taking a look at uh, the average list price to sale price. This is the one on the previous page. I said to you, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Here it is, 97.51. You know, it, it, the, the small amounts make a big deal of difference because realistically, 97.8 is really where it should be. When we're under 97.8, it means the seller is taking more of a reduction in the contract price that they accept than the list price at the time the contract was accepted. So again, normally this should be 97.8. When this is less than 97.8 and you're in a seller's market, it's kind of an anomaly. Um, that's not normally the way it would go. Normally it gets higher, 98, 98 and a half, because that's what happens as you slide your eyes across. Um, you know, you can see we've been very, very low, uh, but we had much more inventory last year and the year before. So right now, as far as, uh, you know, what's going on, I'd say that uh, best thing to do would be take some listings, uh, go out there and communicate with everybody because those who have the oh, listings. Okay, right? I think I'm going to do that yeah. today. <laughs> those who have the listings are really, you know, you, you've got the product and you've got 37,000 other agents in the Valley trying to help you sell yours. If you have a buyer, well, the nice thing is you have 16,000 properties to choose from. But personally, rather be the listing agent right now than the buyer's agent. All right, Todd, I appreciate it as Thanks, always. Man. I'm uh, right when I get done here, I'm going to go out and take a couple of listings. I'm I like just going to make that happen today. Anyways, uh, just kidding. I don't do listings. <laughs> but uh, appreciate everybody. Uh, appreciate all the information, Todd. As always, uh, you'll be able to find these slides on the dashboard yes. this afternoon as well as the rest of our webinar slides. Mick Bernard from the uh, Bookspan Baker team. Mick, what is going on in the market these days? Should Rates are up. Rates are up. I'll see you guys next week. No, All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Drop the mic. As you can see that, you know, that we're up into the fives for FHA, VA. Mm -hmm. uh, we were pushing it for a long time. We keep talking about rates going up and they are. And uh, upward pressure is still upward pressure on rates and bonds. There's no question about that. The Fed is still going to be selling more bonds. And so that's going to put more upward pressure on rates. And so I know we talk about it every week, but get your buyers out there, get them off the fence because this time next year, their payments are going to be dramatically higher than they are right now. So now's the time. Uh, what we want to talk about today is some changes in the Home Plus Down Payment Assistance Program, which is very good, very good news. Uh, limits, income limits are increased to 99000 So you basically make almost 100000 a year and so qualify for Down Payment Assistance Program. Not not bad. Uh, purchase price limits are increasing. I have no idea what that would be like. <laughs> i got to get a different job. <laughs> Um, and then also the purchase price limits increased to 390, almost 397. And so now keep in mind, this is just for Home Plus. Home and Five has not announced any changes. So this is for the conforming program only. Um, the, the one thing we overlooked was there's only available before in a couple of counties. Now it's available statewide. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's cool as well. And so that, that's really the big announcement for this week. It seems like every week we have some other big announcement that comes out in the mortgage industry. So um, I would encourage you to post this, talk about your down payment assistance programs, even if you don't do them. You know, we have clients, I have uh, some other West USA agents that have increased their closing by at least one deal a month by simply talking a lot about this uh, in meetings and social media. And the, I, every referral I get from them, they agent or the, excuse me the buyer wants to talk about down payment assistance and probably only about half of them actually need it or follow through with that program so they all have can get a gift or they have money in their 401k there's other ways uh to be able to fund their deal because keep in mind this is a good program but interest rates are higher and so are closing costs are higher as well well, you know, in the down payment assistance programs, whether you want to do them or not, they are they are the hook. They're, yeah, exactly. They get the phone ringing. They get the conversations going. Whether your client actually does a down to payment assistance program or not doesn't really matter. It's a matter of whether you get them on the phone and get them talking to you guys and get them on some sort of deal so they can go out and buy a home. Exactly. Let's get let's get them talking. Let's get them talking. One thing I'd like to talk about today is the bottom right hand corner, aggressive and proven follow up lead conversion strategy. We use Salesforce. We've got it dialed in with automated responses. I just did an application for a West USA agent last week after the eighth attempt for me to contact a client, whether it's during the day, whether it's an evening, whether it's a Saturday morning, sometimes even Sunday afternoons. I will do what it takes to try to convert your lead into an application and get them prequal for you. All right, Mick, appreciate it as always. And uh, you can feel free to reach out to Mick. The phone number is right there. If you want to get copies of his slides, you want to get his slides co-branded uh, with your information on it as well, they will definitely do that. Appreciate it, Mick, as always. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mick.
All right, a little uh, closing of the deal. So, uh, you know, we always talk about, Todd, and, and I know I sound like a broken record, but um, we always talk about the big problem is not necessarily more leads. It's learning how to close the leads that we have and, and closing the people. So so I'm going to begin a, a two-part series uh, and give everybody six tips on uh, different tips and tricks to, to closing the deal. Nice. So the first one is um, – is, and this is really getting into the sales psychology, but as an agent, when you, especially when you're working with a couple, a couple or multiple buyers, um, you got to determine who the decision maker is. There is one person generally who is leading and driving the decision to buy a home. Not that they're not both involved in the decision making process, but there's generally, in most cases, there's one person who is driving that decision. So you can't forget about the other person, but you need to focus on the needs and the wants of the person who is driving that decision. And and I know you're going to like this, Todd. I mean, <laughs> identify their personality type. Exactly. You know, if if let's say the, the one spouse is leading the decision making, you know, process and he's an engineer and the other one is just, you know, more into arts and crafts and and hobbies and and, and things like that. You know, it's, it's a different style. It's a totally. different approach and and the one who's making that final decision um they're the one that you got to convince. So identify uh, initially. You got to identify their needs and objections. But when again, again, when I say that, doesn't mean that you completely forget about the other person. But right. you got to def- focus on the decision maker. And I remember my wife and I. We were in Mexico years ago. We were at a timeshare presentation. And when I show up to a timeshare presentation, you pretty much have me at hello, <laughs> right? And I made it. We made it very clear that that my wife is in charge of the finances because she's a lot smarter than I am. She's always been in charge of the finances. And he completely I- I- ignored her and kept talking to me about the, the joys and the benefits of, of travel. I'm like, dude, I'm in Mexico. Okay. <laughs> I, I get it, pal. And she was just, she was floored at that. Yeah. Never, the guy never stood a chance of closing the deal. Yeah. What a way to shut down the consumer right there. I mean, their ears are off at that particular point. Um, yeah. You know, this is an old sales technique. We used to always say years ago, you have to have the decision makers in front of you. And that was don't ever go to a listing appointment. If you look on the deed of record, and it shows a husband and a wife or two people, let's put it that way. And, you know, and you go and you're only and you say to somebody, OK, now you and so and so are going to be there. Correct. Oh, no, just me. Well, why go? <laughs> you know, sure, you could take a listing with one, but you, one signature, but you can only take you can only accept a contract with two. <laughs> so you might as well get the other person on board before you start your marketing efforts. So you sure you got what you got. Or you just you ask know. them how good they are at signing their, their the other person. Right? Yeah, Is yeah. that appropriate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. I'm going to let uh, Susan answer that one. But here's the thing. Uh, the uh, Yeah, she's choking over on the side. Uh, it's either a dog. Sometimes it's a dollar sign that makes people want to move. Sometimes it's an emotional decision that wants to make people move. Obviously, I love the assessment if they're a driver or an influencer, a steadfast person or an analytic. Um, and you have to come out of your comfort zone to speak their language. So I, I do like that. But you know, all decisions aren't always made by the person that typically makes a lot of decisions. So you really have to work and listen and watch. Yeah, and figure out the right questions to ask. That's know, how you discover it right know, there. And so forth. All right. Uh, second thing is be genuine. Um, no one likes a phony or an agent that is all about the commission. And when you are all about the commission, when 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 you view the person on the other side of the table as a slab of meat, uh, you know it's kind of like the 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 Elmer Fudd and the Bugs Bunny cartoons when when Elmer Fudd's got his sights set on Bugs Bunny, and all of a sudden Bugs Bunny turns into steak. You know, sometimes that's what we are. We view these people. We we see a commission a sign, sign. And a percentage sign <laughs> yep. uh, behind them, and and buyers and sellers they can, they can sense that they can sense when they're being sold. Yeah, and so it's very important for us to. Really Really take assessment at our style and become genuine. And one of the ways that you can do it is always make it about their needs and their wants, not about yours. Focus on what they need by asking them questions. And then focus on why you got into the business. We always talk about storify your pitch. When you start sharing uh, from your heart about, about how you have helped people, uh, how you've helped first time home buyers or you've helped, you know, military families and, and what, you know, whatever it is. Uh, when you start focusing on the stories of how you've helped people, the passion comes through and, and that right there makes you a genuine person rather than just all about business, all about the commissions and all about sales. Totally. You know, and the other thing is, is also while you're, uh, communicating with these people, I mean, a lot of times we'll tell the story, but we'll, we'll, will make it business instead of making it emotional. 
and and the business side of it could be okay but it's the emotional side that hooks you know it's the so when you're talking about this story the storify part you know make sure that you use the people's first names and make sure that you you know talk if there were children and you know and things of this nature make sure that that the that the you set the story up properly using their names because if it's all about just the action of solving the issue there's no person personification in there yeah, generally when 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 I have meetings and and, and I'm selling something or whatever, uh, generally when I'm done with the pitch and I walk away and I'm driving in my car, or that night, I'm I'm always assessing, mm -hmm. I'm always assessing. Okay, how did I do? Did I screw up? Where was I good? And more importantly, I wonder what the people thought about me when I walked out the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and sometimes it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow, but we always need to be assessing our style. Absolutely. And what do you think? What do you think they say about you? What do you think they yeah. think about you? What emotion did you leave? Yep. So the third thing is uh, be careful what you say. Uh, this is a, this is a huge one. Sometimes we just say whatever we need to say in order to get the deal. Uh, focus on your areas of expertise. Whatever it is you're an expert in, whatever you're really good at, focus in on that. Do not overpromise or commit to things that you can't follow through with. Or uh, I should say, do do not overpromise, commit to something you can't. There's a typo there um, because this business is about referrals. Right. This business is about relationship building. Yeah, you may close the deal um, by overpromising and not being able to deliver, but that person will not refer you. That couple will not refer you because they know that you've let them down. Mm -hmm. And and then, of course, be careful, of, especially when you're first meeting people, be careful of offensive jokes or comments. Oh this gosh. is huge right now. Yeah. Though they may laugh, it doesn't mean that they – appreciate your sense of humor or your point of view. Most people uh, will tend to laugh just out of nervousness. If they're awkward, if they find something that you said somewhat offensive, they might laugh just to get you out the door. So you got to be very, very careful what you say in this, in, as far as jokes, uh, political views and things like that, especially when you're in sales and then don't overpromise. That's one of yeah. the worst things that you can do. It's okay to say, hey, I don't know the answer, I, but I have people that can help me get the answer for you. Yeah. You know, listing appointments were, were not made for us to sell ourselves. You know, in the old days, the sales process was sell yourself, sell the company, demonstrate the product or sell the product, demonstrate the product and close the sale. And, you know, and today, you know, those things are should be now part of a pre-listing package that you deliver the night before. You know, the company's great accomplishments of being the 14th largest company in the country, you know, production wise, uh, your success, your and then even some of your stories and, and, the, and your process or your advertising campaigns, things of that nature should all be be built into your pre-listing kit. So when you go in during the day, you know, I find this mostly with new agents, but even some successful ones, but mostly new is, you know, you think it's all about the pitch. Well, the pitch is how well you ask questions and answer them. It's not about you selling yourself. And, and the harder you try to sell yourself and the product, the farther away from the deal you're going to get. All right, that is your three pack. Again, if you'd like copies of the slides, you can find them on the dashboard and or email us at webinar at westusa.com and we will get these out uh, to you. Few announcements. Um, I know this is a this is a really speaking a, of a tough pill to swallow. Uh, many of you will go into deep, dark depression next week because we're going to be taking next Tuesday off. So we will not be having a webinar uh, next Tuesday in honor of the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and just to, you know, enjoy your time and enjoy your week and enjoy your weekend. But of course, do not, whatever you do, yeah. do not drink and drive. So no webinar next Tuesday. But uh, if you do find yourself going through withdrawals, you can go to the West USA Realty YouTube channel and you can download our webinars from I don't know how far back, yeah, how far now. back they go. Uh, continuation, um, all, most of our offices are doing water drives. So uh, so if you have not brought by a case of water, uh, do so. Um, do so. But I mean, it's uh, the time's coming up this week. So uh, get your cases of water into your perspective or your respective offices. All right. We've got um, – pretty excited about this. This Friday, our Chandler office is turning one year. Can you believe it's I, been I a can't. year already? No. I remember the grand opening event. I'm still recovering <laughs> from that. So now we're going to turn around and do this thing again. Yep. So uh, this is a all-day event. Uh, they're going to be doing breakfast, uh, and then they're going to be doing a potluck for lunch, and then a happy hour. 
uh, whatever events that you want to attend, um, just let them know. Let the office know. Um, and you don't have to be from the Chandler office. That's if you've been point. in one of uh, one of the other offices, you've been wanting to check out the Chandler office, or you've been thinking about moving to the Chandler office, this is your opportune opportune time uh, to check that out. So get signed up for it. So we hopefully will see you uh, next Friday. We're pretty much going to be there all day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just eating all day. Yeah. The, the weekend starting a day early. Yeah. So this is now becoming a four day weekend, and then with no <laughs> webinar, it's a five day week. And heck, we will see you well, in we'll July. We'll be working we'll on Tuesday. We just won't be having a <laughs> webinar. <laughs> All right. So uh, so we'd love to see you. And, of course, we've um, got some great sponsors, HCP Inspections on Q Financial, and, of course, our friends at American Title. So we'll see you next uh, this Friday yeah. uh, coming up. I will be there uh, most of the day. So uh, so hope to see you. And uh, maybe we will uh, maybe we can start breakfast with some Bloody Marys. Let's just do it Ooh. all day long. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be Uber. I wonder how much of an Uber is going to be for my house down the channel. All right. Lastly, uh, we uh, this is tomorrow. There are still a couple spots left if you are a producing agent. And you've been contemplating, been thinking about forming a team. Uh, the last thing you want to do is just go form a team without totally. really having get, getting your homework done, researching it. So we're putting together this special workshop tomorrow. Uh, it's really going to go give you the blueprint, the things that you need to consider when building a team, the benefits, the advantages that West USA offers our team leaders, which is important, uh, and and the resources that we have available for those starting a team. Because you know when you just start a team, you're kind of on your own, I, and we don't want you to be on your own. I like what you said last week too when you were when you were doing the spot you, you said you know come whether you if you're even thinking about starting a team come and even if the worst thing is you leave may having made the decision that you're not the point is you're going to be much more focused this year and i loved that comment so i think you should you should just reiterate that or i guess i just did you know <laughs> either way right <laughs> you know come if you're going to start a team or come if you're thinking of starting a well, team. well if you're just thinking about starting a team come anyway no I'm that's kidding. what i'm saying <laughs> hey good idea mike yeah, hey appreciate that todd uh so all you got to do is go to westusabusiness.com sarah's going to send you the link uh, i think or already did uh, so you can get signed up for that uh, again there's a couple spots left it is in Scottsdale at the Academy Mortgage Office on Pima Road uh, some incredible restaurants right around that area so afterwards <laughs> feel free to uh, take me to lunch so hopefully we'll see everybody there or not everybody only those thinking about starting a team so that is tomorrow uh, from 10 to noon all right. Um, all right. So we've got a brand new managing broker, Susan yeah. Slattery. Susan, welcome. First of all, uh, let me be the 150th person to welcome you to West USA. I'm a little late in the game. You're the 151st. 151st. Perfect. Yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah. So nice. uh, so welcome to West USA. And before we dive in, uh, I just uh, tell us a little bit about you, a little bit about your background and uh, where'd you come from and what's your favorite thing to eat? My favorite thing to eat is ice cream. Can okay. we just start with that? Because that's <laughs> and there isn't any here, so I'm a little disappointed. Well, we we sorry, we had breakfast burritos. We oh. we did have breakfast burritos with uh, with the uh, mint and chip ice cream stuffed <laughs> in it. Uh, yeah, so stuffed pretty, in it, pretty good. It's a little it's a little melted now. Ew. Um, well, I've been licensed uh, in real estate since 1996. I became a broker in 2001 and opened my own company. I've been a, a DB since then, and so I have a lot of a. Uh, broker experience and i've been with west usa now for three weeks wow there we go. i know it's crazy yeah it has been how many calls have you taken a lot <laughs> a lot and honestly it's great because i love to see the agents reaching out and yeah. i get to you know I, I make a little extra time right now to talk to them and so they can get to know me and we want nice. them to call. We want yeah. you guys to call. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, um, Michael always jokes, we'd rather have you call and, and ask how to do something instead of, uh, hey, this is what I just did. Exactly. Yeah, how do I get exactly. out of it? I think, I think uh, you know, no offense. I think Dale started that one, but uh, but that is so true. And and Susan, you and I go way back. Susan also we does do. a, a ton of commu uh, community involvement. She's been on a number of AAR panels. Uh, uh, you know, it was just at NAR this week, but I think mm -hmm. she's going to tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about NAR. Uh, I was always you got some really interesting stuff, uh, and so let's dive into it. Um, so, um, first of all, fair housing uh, was one of the themes. So let's let's talk about fair housing and and your takeaways, your key takeaways. Well, 2018 is the 50th anniversary of the passage, and so that was the the overall focus of the event, other than the usual legislative factors. Um, 
uh, Ben Carson was our speaker. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really good. He's the uh, secretary of the uh, of HUD. HUD. Former presidential candidate. Yep. 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 And he spoke about he really he focused on how far we've come and how far we still have to go in fair housing and the newer issues uh, regarding you know going past race, going past disability, gender issues. You know, bringing it to the forefront, which was really interesting. Um, I found the statistics to be mind blowing with 30,000 complaints in a year. Wow. And almost all of them in rentals. So if you're thinking about becoming a property manager, don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to go. You don't have to go to the uh, team meeting for this one, right, right. Mike? <laughs> well, what that speaks to is having clear-cut policies in writing. Yeah. If you're going to be a property manager, make sure you have your policies and procedures in writing, so that you're consistent with everyone that comes and goes. That's well, yeah, and, and then for a lot of us who who um, invest in in Zillow, especially in Zillow, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the leads are are our rental leads yep. and, and new agents kind of get involved in rental leads and we throw them kind of into, into that. But, but uh, w with this, we got to be very, very careful. I mean, yeah. even, even as a new agent, if you're working rental leads uh, you probably should have some sort of procedural list put together. Absolutely. And there's so many tools out there. And if you reach out to us, we can guide you toward those tools to put something in place. Rentals are actually more complicated than sales. They're tedious. There's so many tiny little parts involved and, they're just they're highly litigious that's true that's true see yep. bob bob agrees yep. all right and then and then as far as um as far as newer issues arising i mean what are some of the key things that we need to be on the lookout for well um in regards to in the fair housing in regards to fair housing well it's funny because this is actually on a later slide but um the issue of assistive animals mm -hmm. was very yep. Uh, vocal <laughs> this uh, session and we got nowhere. Yeah. Literally. Um, there's just, there's a lot of problems out there, but there's been no movement on how to fix it because you don't want to discriminate against anybody who does have any type of emotional issues or PTSD. You, know, you can't see that. Right. So uh, yeah, that was yeah. a weird one. Interesting. All right. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, I have some thoughts, but I'm probably going to go ahead and keep those to myself. Yeah. Be careful with that one. <laughs> All right. So in early 2018, uh, AAR filed the Protect Arizona Taxpayer Act mm -hmm. to amend the AZ Constitution to permanently ban sales tax on professional services. So talk about that exactly. Kind of what was that? For, for the we have some new agents. So right. and this is the thing, especially when it comes down to rate pack. Is, is that still yep. the current that is name? It. Yep. You know, when, exactly. when, you, when you pay your dues, there's a there's a line item there to contribute to rate pack. And for our newer agents, they have no idea what it is. Right. But I am telling you, contribute your thirty dollars because I can't tell you how many thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars and maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars for our more experienced agents that RayPAC has saved you over the exactly. years. Exactly. Yes. Let's call it what it is. It's lobbying money. And, and that's what it is. And the Arizona Association of Realtors spends a lot of time down at the state looking at the specific issues that affect homeownership. That's our job is to protect the homeowner. And this tax issue comes up every single year because they figure it out. Oh, let's tax professional services. That's where you get your haircut. That's, uh, you know, somebody that cleans your home. It's just, and obviously the big dollar item is us. Right. This move will permanently shut it down so that it won't keep coming up over and over and over again. And we're out there gathering signatures on the petitions, uh, trying to get it shut down. So, so, so let me just see if I understand what you're saying. So uh, by by getting the petition signed and, and mm -hmm. by having AAR uh, uh, be the spokesperson for this, because they're very powerful, yes. um, and we get the constitution changed, Correct. then the, when we say they can't ever come back and change it, it's because they'd have to come back to the public and, and the people yep. that live in the state and say, hey, you know, here, we want you to reverse this constitutional right. change right. so that you can be taxed right. on services. Exactly. And, and so that's what you mean when you say that, which is which basically means we need to get the people out in force and agents need to become under, understand these things and, and share this with their clients and friends. Exactly. And, and, and donate if you can. I mean, that $30 goes so far yeah and, and and again just to reiterate so how it you know you know how it applies to us as real estate agents you know we we help somebody sell a house 
uh, they pay us, you know, let's say there's a $10,000 commission that we get, your seller now is going to pay an additional Correct. above and beyond the $10,000, yep. a sales tax or a service tax. Yeah. I mean, think about what that does to our industry. Yeah, back earlier, we fought that uh, Proposition 100, if you remember, where we had the Constitution change to eliminate a transfer tax for homeowners, right. which was right. going to be 3 to 6% of the sale price, just in a tax. Um, and AAR was uh, efficient and proficient, I guess you could say, got all of the realtors out there and, the, and then, you know, of course, had great momentum. This is very similar to that, but very. this, instead of being a tax on the transfer of the house, this is a, this is just on all attorneys. Like you said, hair mm -hmm. salons, uh, it's going to put yeah, a big yeah, issue out there. All the closing yeah. costs our yeah. buyers and sellers already, already pay. pay. Yeah. Now, exactly. Now, now, okay. This, this is going to put some people out of the market. It's going to be very painful. It, it's just going to hurt so many. All right. So again, uh, when you do pay your dues and you do see the line item at the bottom for Ray pack, um, it's a, it's in a, incredibly important uh, organization that helps us and solely represents us as realtors. So don't be a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Contribute a, the, what is the yeah. minimum. The 30 bucks. It's 30 a no bucks. Fair share is what they yeah. refer yeah. to it so, as. Uh, so yeah. that's what they do. And among other things. All right. This is my favorite part um, because <laughs> I literally, uh, we were at, we were at the, uh, I don't know where I was. I think it was at the boys burger club uh, last week. And a uh, group of us, we started talking about um, this idea of you've now got to be careful. Yes. Your clients got to be careful of what you say when you're showing a home because there's cameras and microphones oh, everywhere. Yeah. And apparently um, you guys were listening into our lunch and, and <laughs> chose to have a discussion. Yes, on I the brought National that States. to NAR from your lunch, just so you know. <laughs> so, so talk about it and, and what do we need to know and, and how prevalent is this? Very. Uh, Technology is always a big conversation at these large events. You know, what's the latest and greatest? And aside from all the buzz, the practical application is the possible danger to your clients of, of putting their position in jeopardy. Many urban areas are just getting a uh, influx of these security cameras. We can go, go get them at Costco right. and they're great because they, they, they help protect your home and this and this and that, but we don't think about the long-term consequences. They are on when you go in the house, look at this flooring and your client loves it. And they say how much they love it. Guess what? They go to put an offer in. Sellers know they love it. Yeah, and I would say, and and one of the the questions that was raised was, well, this seems to be some sort of violation of privacy. Nope. And I'm like, no, it's you not. Are You're going in their house. Their house. <laughs> yep. This yeah. is their domain. Yep. Right. So, but I would also say, uh, well, so first of all, we we need to educate our buyers. Correct. I mean, this is now part of the discussion that we have when we yep. get into the car with our buyers. Uh, Okay, if you if you want to discuss the house, what you like, what you don't like, let's wait till we get outside or wait till we get into the car. But there's a good chance that they are listening. Or you could just take notepads and scratch on the notepads and hand it back to each other. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, but you could also you could uh, reverse it if I know there's cameras in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, you know, I, yeah, we like yeah. this house, yes! but it's just a little overpriced. Boy, if we could get it for this price, I mean, mm -hmm. you could really, you could really. You could do some serious reverse psychology work there. work the other direction. Yeah. That's we could yep. that's a that's a whole marketing yeah, it, michael that was that i was you know just before you were saying that I'm thinking, <laughs> you know we really ought to talk about the fact of how we could set people up for that right let's start a class on that what a nice idea love <laughs> okay love it god i gotta hit the bell yeah hit the bell i mean i want to go i want to yeah. do this i want to <laughs> i want to screw with people yeah but even if you can't yeah. i mean and again yeah. even if you can't see the cameras i mean just you now have no, to run under the own. assumption you can't see them a lot of the times there yep yep so i no longer can raid the refrigerator because I'm going to get Yeah, you might, might want to not open the pantry door and see what spices they have and don't have. I'm not looking for spices, <laughs> Susan. Yeah, I know. I'm looking I'm looking for beer and I was trying and, to save you on that sandwiches. one, Mike. Okay. Yeah. All right, um and so um as a, a newer broker, you you took some calls and so we're going to highlight a few of your calls. Um so um this is a good one. So an yeah. agent called wanting to work for a friend as a uh, transaction coordinator. But the friend works at a different brokerage. Can we do that? We cannot. Um, she was she was she was enthusiastic about the question, and then she wasn't enthusiastic about the answer. Understandably, um, and I, she's like, "Well, is that a West USA thing?" I said, "No, it's a law." And <laughs> she asked me what the law was, and I I said, "You know, give me five minutes, and I'll email it to you because I don't have that in my head." And it is an administrative code, and I yep. emailed it to her. 
Um, it's just it's a conflict of interest and a no no. And so, how does that protect the agent, the transaction coordinator, and protect us? Protects everybody. Um, you know, we have a fiduciary duty to our clients, and that other agent at that other brokerage has a fiduciary duty to their clients, and, and we, that's just a it gets messy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the other agent, and I want to clarify that just terminology wise, the other agent we're speaking about, if that person was a transaction coordinator on your file, but they work from different right. brokerage. Now you've got two brokerages that are involved in the same transaction, mm -hmm. um, not the other agent in the deal. <laughs> Correct. So yeah, I just want to make sure we were still thinking about the transaction course yes. coordination. Part. Yes, yeah, we are. Exactly. We are. All right. Uh, second one, a cash buyer. I love cash buyers. I wanted <laughs> to have help. an appraisal during the 10 day inspection and thought they retained that contingency because of the inspection period got to use I, I should read this ahead of time got to use the additional clause addendum to make that happen so ex explain that and and how the appraisal is part of the additional clause addendum so it can get confusing with all the contingencies that are in a normal contract and and this was a, a mistake that thought that the appraisal contingency could be an out because of the inspection period mm -hmm. and the appraisal it contingency goes away when you have a cash buyer unless you put it back in mm -hmm. with the additional clause addendum and that didn't happen in this case okay so so, so the buyer and the buyer's agent correct. assumed uh that that the that the appraisal uh, contingency was still in place because it's in the contract well and yeah. they thought it was part of the inspection and it's they're two real, completely yeah. separate things real, appraisal real, inspection real important to look at the headings because, it is. you know, when you're in the, under the finance heading, then all those terms, if you go cash, go away. They go, they go away. So that's what really what we're saying. And that appraisal contingency falls under the, uh, the finance Financing, provisions. Correct. So uh, you have two choices. You could be a drafts person, call your broker and say, Hey, what, what clause do I use? Or try to draw one yourself. But that is not as good a policy no. as would be for you to go to the additional clause addendum. It's all uh, printed because out there. it's all printed there. So again, then you'd want to concern whether you want to copy that language off the additional clause addendum and put it in your contract. That, that might be another reason to call your broker just in case. Yeah, it was a learning moment and, yeah. and we, we worked it out and moving forward. Yep. He's, he's but that's a great one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know yeah. that. So uh, hey, learn something new every day. All right. So now uh, lastly. Um, oh, back to those. <laughs> love the dog. Yeah, back to the dog. So assistant animals. <laughs> this is the thing. Okay, so what is... And I, I know you're not an attorney. I know. Uh, um, I so, might be. So, okay, let's go maybe go into more detail of what was discussed at NAR. Um, what is considered an assistive animal uh, and and what can landlords do at this point? And, and then if the landlord is just a landlord, does not have an agent representing them, don't they have a little bit more ability to restrict people or not with assistive no. animals? No, no. They don't. Um, it doesn't matter if they're with a property manager or not. Um, an assistive animal can be any animal that will not cause danger. For you can't have an assistive crocodile because that would don't laugh. No, that's there is an assistive peacock out there. And that is a fact. Someone has an assistive peacock. So this animal cannot be of danger to other people. So I don't know. Assistive tarantula could be okay. a maybe. So, so Mike, I think we're and and we have the same issue or the same question, which is just you know, okay. So I see two dogs. Yep. You know, both are saying that they're assisted living dogs, meaning mm -hmm. that they're saying, oh, I use this one because it warms my heart and it controls my anxiety. And the other person, you know, has trouble seeing. And so they have a, a you know, and that dog has a coat on, you know, has one of those little jackets over it, the special colored thing that says I've got service five animal. In my trunk and yeah. I'll, I'll sell you, yeah. I'll sell them to you. So what, right. what, what is, I mean, is there anything that you are aware of that, you know, without having to have a little research, you could provide to us uh, with respect to how to identify the difference between an in-service dog and a non-in-service dog? In this context, there isn't any. Okay. In in the in the context of rental property, there isn't any. If the landlord property manager can visually see the um, disability or or that the tenant has, can see they're missing a limb, can see they're blind, they cannot ask what the pet is for because hmm. they can. It's obvious. If the if you cannot see. The, the issue yeah. that they have, then you can ask for a doc letter from a doctor. Yeah. However, you can go on the internet and get those letters. Right. Now, 
someone but you, but, but, okay let me stop you this but even but, though you can go on the internet and, and right. get, get the letter though as a landlord you can require though some sort of documentation yes you can yes you can so the next obvious question is can you can you add a, an additional pet deposit you cannot you cannot add a deposit you cannot increase the rent you cannot in any way you know get any help with that. So basically if they lied in the end and you go back mm -hmm. into your place and the, all the legs of your furniture because it was furnished is chewed upon, then you then have a different Correct. ability to go after them civilly for Correct. the damage to the property. Correct. But you yeah. don't have any deposits. You don't to have keep any deposits. Right. Exactly. Okay. And the other thing is they could That's have two. Yeah. They could have two or three at this point because they could have different say it's emotional issues they could have a different pet or i'm sorry they're not pets they could yeah. have a different animal for each issue yeah okay so what do, what do we foresee I, I know the state of arizona I, I believe was was tossing around a law um or i mean do we foresee somewhere down the road where where this documentation and again you may not know the answer but this documentation has to come from some sort of doctor psychologist or or physician it, um, it came up at, at nar and in front of you know hundreds of people and it's just nowhere it's yeah. going nowhere right now right yeah. now there just isn't any way to no one's come up with a concrete way to safely go around it to not discriminate yeah. against. You, you, yeah, you, it's, it's like any other thing. I mean, you know, um, you could go to a chiropractor, different levels. I mean, the law, right. the, the stipulations would have to be so intricate. Mm -hmm. And then you then, then in, and then any law that's out there, you then have an accountability factor, which we all are aware of in the world. Right. <laughs> but the fact is, is yeah, how are you going to enforce it? And, right. then, and then who's the police person? Is it the state, the federal? Is it the attorney general? Right. It, you know what? The, the, it becomes so complex at messy. that particular point. Yeah. All right. So uh, basically, I mean, I, I guess another lesson um, uh, for our property managers out there or those people listing yeah. rental properties, uh, I think this has to be part of the education process before yes. you actually make make the rental property available. You've, you've got to have you, you, you don't want to surprise your landlord. Oh, by the way, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, you've got to yeah. take a peacock here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This could be a great reason for our property managers to, and, and any tenant uh, representative, to communicate with their clients right now. Um, in fact, actually, Susan, I'd imagine that, you know, you and Mike and, and Bob and everybody are, and Dean are talking about this or will be talking about this. Um, and, and as Mike says, bringing this education out to our agents because this is actually a, a, a position change in reality. It is. Um, and so as a result, we don't want our agents saying to someone oh no if it's not doesn't have in service papers it's not a service dog right. when the interpretation is no longer that this can go so, all the way back yeah. to discrimination. so maybe we can get out with david pruitt and our head of our you know property management department and really try to get the get ahead of this issue i'm the odd one out i love property management <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, you, yeah, I think you mentioned in in some email that you were a nerd. So yeah, uh, I, I think I actually can. Yeah, I'm not calling you one. You call yes, you yourself are. that. Um, <laughs> no, okay. So then one last question. So okay, let's. That's just, why she's got the dog sitting over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's say uh, Kidding. said tenant, uh, I have to approve. Has got a service peacock, and I say that because Sarah over here is very passionate about peacock. I did not know not. that. Yes, yes. Um, and let's say the peacock is very, very noisy and the landlord's getting complaints from the neighbors. Oh my goodness. I mean, can I just say I'm not an attorney at this point? <laughs> yeah, you can, actually, you can, because that, that just, that just goes to prove you're the right broker. <laughs> I mean, this is this is gets dicey. It does. It oh does. my gosh, that was a great interjection, Mike. I mean, think about it. Yeah, I'm. I, yeah. And it's, then and then what if then what if the tenant moves in and then three months later wants to get a pet? Now all they have to say is, "Hey, I'm got I got this paper from I know from the internet and uh, you know um, you know my kid wants yeah. a a pet snake. Guess yeah. what? Uh, my kid needs a a, sir, a, a, a boa constrictor. Snake. Yeah. 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 I know. It's it's huh. very very complex. All right. Well, fortunately, I got to imagine if it's this complex, which I agree it is, uh, that I'm sure there's going to be some very high level, uh, you know, politicians helping us make these decisions. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Hence why I, there are all the annoying pets at the at the grocery stores now. Um, yes. You know when and when, you're, else. When, when you when you got a rhino going down aisle three. <laughs> um, 
I think you're abusing the intent of the law. I'm surprised you brought that up. Costco, we have this little Maltese. It's about six pounds wet. And uh, Costco, uh, Lynn takes him pretty much everywhere, my wife. And, um, you know, and he has a little kind of bag, tote bag that she wears around <laughs> her shoulder. But in one particular case, she'd had him in the car. She well, obviously isn't going to leave a pet in the car in 140 degree temperature inside it. Brings him into Costco just last week. Brings him into Costco, sat him in the, the upper section where, you know, usually the purses go yeah. and things like that. Walking through and they came over to her and they said, ma'am, is that an in-service dog? And she said, no, it's not. She goes, well, our company policy just changed and you'll have to take the dog out. You can't shop with the dog in the cart. She goes, well, how about if I put him, if I go back out to the car and put him in, you know, my purse and come back in with them? She says, no. They said no. Wow. So and so I think now if, if you see this happening with real estate, I'm not so sure. They've got a leg anymore <laughs> they don't. On, on what they call an in-service well, dog. Just change their answer yeah. to yes. Well, my 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 60-pound lab also likes Costco, but he likes to sample things. His head is just <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the right height <laughs> for the samples. Oh, my goodness. All right, Susan, appreciate it. Uh, thank glad you. to have you here, Susan. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank again, you welcome to West USA. We are truly honored and glad to, to have you. All right, Bob, um, you and Bernadette, you take in, what pet do you guys take out in public? Do you have any pets? Each other. <laughs> She's got a service vest for you, right? <laughs> okay. That we uh, When we met 25 years ago, I said, I don't want any. And she says, me neither. And I said, I don't want any plants even. I don't want anything that we have to take care of. We're together. You and I will take care of you and I, and that's it. We want to leave the house, get in the car, and go. And so that's the way it is with us. So there well, you go. Well done. Well done. Huh? <laughs> but you talk about that. Cyber but you make it sound like that you set the ground rules. I've met your wife. I think she's setting the ground rules over there. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a story about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's. Uh, uh, yeah. She, if people talk to me and they should be talking to her so yeah yeah we get into that uh, type of things and she gets real irritated quick so as, as cyber security about going into a house and looking at it i went into a house real fast i had clients with me i went in there and i come back out and i said oh my god i said have you seen the carpeting it was red and he said oh yes we want this place. And I was thinking, well, <laughs> who would buy red carpeting? Um, so a brand new agent, but I'm stupid. I, I, I shouldn't be making comments like that. And I remember I used to go out in the street when we'd arrive at a house and I'd look up at the roof and I'd say, look at that roof. It's perfect, isn't it? Well, what a dumb statement that is. <laughs> well, why, why? But I'm no, learning. I'm learning. And I'm still here 45 years later. Yeah, we've all done that. That 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 oh. is a learning episode. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Here's a situation I get into quite quite often and I'm sure uh, you do too. It's uh, it's about what's required when you sell your own property. Here's two ladies, one right after the other here. Here's a form for you if you're going to sell your own property. What do you have to do? And it's in the a156 form. Take a look at it. It's in your dashboard. Ding, ding. And so it it, it, it explains exactly where you stand on that because sometimes I, I can't think. I see there's four things you got to do, but take a look at it and you'll know and carry it with you in case you sell your own. And a lot of agents do sell their own properties. So I just want you to know what the form is. A156. Okay, what else we got here? Here, here's, a, here's a lady. This is very interesting. She's going up north. She's buying a property. She's going to buy it, and she's going to rent it back to the owner. She says, I'm renting it back to him for one year. Oh, okay, that's fine. She says, so how do I write that up? I says, you write a lease. A lease? No, I'm, I'm just charging him a dollar a month for 12 months and letting him stay there. I said, oh, for sure you're going to have a lease or we're not going <laughs> to handle this at all. You can go ahead and do this without us if you want to. Does he have a peacock? 
<laughs> you know that uh, it was what is it? Is it R four twenty eight eleven zero one duties to clients? Or it's I'm not sure right off the top of my head now. Uh, but there's a a law in the state of Arizona that says if a client asks you about a pre or post possession interest or, you know, wanting to negotiate that in the terms that you, we must refer them to. Now, it doesn't mean they have to go see one, but we must in writing is the way brokers typically like it. Say to them through an email or of some nature, um, you must have, you must speak to an attorney. You must speak to a tax person, an insurance person, because all these things, Bobby, we've even, we've even sat here and had some conversations about post-possession where people have yeah. had the house burned down. It got flooded. I mean, all these different types of things. Um, and but I would like you to go look at that up because um, and I'm not talking to Bob, I'm talking to all of our listeners, because that's really important. It's a duty. It's a law. We, we this isn't a suggestion. <laughs> this is something we have to do. So and there's dire consequences if you don't take care of that stuff. Here's a fellow out here. Uh, he said uh, he just closed a transaction and now he gets a call from the other some other broker that says, oh, we have a buyer broker agreement with that lady. I said, well, did you ask her if she had a buyer broker agreement? And he said, yeah, I asked her and she does not that they did, but they canceled it. Oh, really? Did you get a copy of that cancellation? Well, no, I didn't do that. She told me she canceled it and that's good enough. No, it's not good enough because now there's an issue here. And this lady may have to pony up a commission to the other broker. You don't have to because you Ouch. didn't uh, have anything to do with this. But it, it's going to go the other way for you. And your client will wind up not liking you so much because she's in trouble here. So watch out for that stuff. If they say they did get it canceled, I want to see it. Signed by the other agent? No, no. I want it signed by the broker. The broker. I, I, I don't know why that makes such a big difference. You, you know, you got 2,500 agents and there's only one person whose signature counts, really, and that's the designated broker. So be aware of that and always think about that. Well, let's not let Michael know that. It might get to his head. So <laughs> I'm going to let him know it when I get Too late. out of here. <laughs> He's listening. And, and uh, uh, here's another lady. She she got a uh, uh, an offer on a property and everything, and so uh, uh, she's gotten a verbal counter because they're going to counter this and make it uh, for more money. She gets a verbal counter. I said, tell them to put it in writing. You you know what happens here is agents, and I've had them say this to me. And Bob, I don't want to get tied up with his back and forth counter offers. Well, I don't care what you don't want to get put into here. You're working for somebody. You're going to make eight, ten grand. Is is it too much to ask that you put this stuff in writing and take care of it? That's what I want you to do. So, so Bob, you always bring these real unique scenarios in when, when you do, you don't do that sections. And, and I love it uh, yeah. because it forces and you always have with you a copy of either the contract or the, you know, a document or whatnot. And, and I want to refer, tell you, have agents go back because, you know, you should have already had that conversation with your clients as you were filling out the ER form, because, uh, you know, in the ER form, it says, do you want me to uh, submit verbal offers to you. If you check, if, if the consumer doesn't and they check, no, I don't, then obviously that you can say to the other agent, I need it in writing. Um, you know, if they don't, then realistically we get, we really kind of have to present it as a verbal. But at that particular point, if the buyer, if the seller says, yeah, I'll play, well then obviously you need it in writing. Yeah, this one uh, went the other way on it and the, uh, the seller did not want a verbal counter on that one. Um, oh, you know, this guy here, the, the, this was something else with a, with another firm. Uh, here it is. He wants the agents, uh, wants the sellers to vacate the, the home completely before he's going to do a final walkthrough. Well, they're not going to do that. Yeah. They, they, they live there. Okay. That's a, that's a new one. That gets yeah. a ding. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I've had this before. There's some agents out there that want you out. And then what, what he says after that, the home must be clean. Well, where does it say that in the contract? Does anybody find that yet? <laughs> yeah, it used to be there. It used to be. Used to be there. I had it removed when I was on the committee in the year 2000. Home must be broom clean is what it said. Whatever that means. Uh, that same contract had two places in it. It, it, it says reasonable. Mm -hmm. I said, that's dumb. Reasonable? What's it mean? Yeah. It means a lot of things to different people. Uh, so we, we got that dumped out of there. But this guy wanted the home to be clean. So I, I called uh, the other broker. Yes, she finally called me back. And, and I said, it sounds like we've got this worked out. So this guy has come to his senses. And I wonder if he's a new guy or something. No, he's a 35-year veteran of the business. And he wants people out before they do the final walkthrough. <laughs> and he says that he will hold up the closing. Ooh, duh. D-U-H. Don't say that. He will hold up the closing. The agent said that? The agent said that. Oh. So, uh, you yeah. know, his client doesn't even know that he sa has said this, but he's saying it to the to our agents, yeah. and they're telling me about this. So he's uh, uh, fostering an anticipatory breach of contract here. Yeah. And does he know how much trouble he's getting people into here? This could be just a mess. You know, that's the biggest issue I find with experienced people is yeah. that, and I'm, I, I fall into that category of experienced, but, you know, at some particular point, you've got to remain competent. You've got to take Marge's class, you know, take it again <laughs> as far as contracts, because the contract terminology changes. This is probably the guy that used to do the close of escrow plus two way back when, right? Close the deal. And then, and then we want the, the seller wants to re remain in there for two days to clean the property for the buyer. Remember years ago? Yeah. You know, yeah. but come on, really? Yeah. No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, that was uh, something else that I worked on in the year 2000 was to get the clarified. What does it mean? Cause people say, well, close of escrows today and we've got till five o'clock to move out. No, you don't. <laughs> if it's closed, it's somebody else's property. That's right. Well, it's pretty hard to get them out sometimes because yeah. you got to serve them in five day notice and you got to go through all of this yada yada here to get them out. But it sounds pretty good when you yeah. <laughs> tell them they need to be out of there. Oh, <laughs> going back to your first conversation today, Bob, about the post closing agreement. That's another reason why you don't do, you, you know, you do it on a, on a lease agreement. And that's, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, you know, we say three days will allow without a lease agreement. I'm not so sure that that's even a good practice. I, I want a lease agreement because it it's a landlord tenant act is what it applies to. And you can get people out later in case they don't uh, do what they say they're going to do. Does anybody not do that and say, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh then uh, another thing is we we got twice this past week here is is the the uh, one of them, the binzer comes in and says ten thousand dollars to be credited to the buyer that's all it says well there's no repairs requested and we go into legal hotline and we find the necessary paperwork there that's not that's not going to work well. $10,000. Can somebody do that? Well, they could on an addendum. They could go over and do it on an addendum and maybe they will be credited with $10,000. But wait a minute. There's something else entering here. Are you borrowing money to buy this house? Well, yes. Well, the lender's not going to lend you $300,000 with $10,000 worth of repairs to be done. It's not happening. Quit thinking of these things. You know, the lender is very involved in these things, and they want that house in tip-top shape. 
All right, Bob, appreciate it. As always, great, great stuff. Appreciate it, Susan and Todd, for uh, stopping by. I'll leave you the quote of the day uh, from Franklin D. Roosevelt. And uh, before we get into that, as a reminder, uh, there will be no webinar next Tuesday. We're going to be taken off because of the Memorial Day weekend, so enjoy the week. Uh, again, we will not be back next Tuesday, but we'll leave you the quote of the day from FDR. Happiness lies in the joy of achievement and the thrill of creative effort. Appreciate everybody joining us this morning. Go out and sell a home.